Hello and welcome to Crossing Bridges. Ladies and gentlemen, my guests today are two icons in the music industry, Alan J. Friedman and Jeff Silbar. Both are highly regarded, respected, and well-known in the industry. Today, you will have an opportunity to hear both of these gentlemen explain about their background, what they are adventuring together, and far more than you expect. From the standpoint, these two people are truly humanitarian that are devoted most of their lives to make sure that through their songs, writing, composing, and so forth, bring the message of peace and harmony to all of us in order for us to have a better life, and especially for our children. And this began when Alan J. Friedman, award-winning Emmy producer of a show titled The Young Man from Boston that was assigned to him by the first former lady, Jackie Kennedy, after the death of former first president, John F. Kennedy. And after that show was aired on the first night, he had the most highest rating that ABC ever had for one particular show. The soon after, Bobby Kennedy, the president's brother, requested from Alan J. Friedman, if you would be so kind, to do another documentary that Alan produced and wrote the 1,000 days of JFK. But the main thing that he really told Alan was, you must keep the dream of Camelot alive. Because if you remember, ladies and gentlemen, when JFK took office, everyone called a new era, a new era of Camelot. And you saw the wonderful things that they both did, both Jackie Kennedy and, of course, first um, the president. And that carried on during the entire time they were in the White House. And since then, when Allen did that 1,000 day of JFK's life, he has continued to maintain the dream of Camelot. And since he met Jeff Seilbar, and they're collaborating on a musical that we'll talk about it, they both have continued to keep the dream alive. At this time, it's my pleasure to welcome my guest to the show. To my right, Alan J. Friedman. Alan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Jeff, it's a pleasure to have you. No, I'm glad to be here. Thank and you. so nice to have both of you here. And thank you very much for taking time from your busy schedules. Jeff, let's start with you. You are really an icon in the musical industry. Mm -hmm. You have written over 2,000 songs. Mm -hmm. You sing. You play guitar. You're multi-talented. If you'd be so kind, tell me who was instrumental in your early lifehood to prompt you to go into musical business as you have? Well, early on, I remember uh, my ukulele. I played it lefty, and I was doing Ricky Nelson songs. So I, I remember that. And uh, it was a dream of mine that I remember I used to walk to school, and I would be singing like you whistle, hoping maybe somebody would hear me sing. And uh, as I grew older, of course, you get into school, and I was started playing in rock bands and all that stuff. And uh, that's when I really began writing songs. Uh, I left my town of Lexington, Kentucky, and went to Nashville. And kind of the place to I be. Kind of hit it there for a while. About ten years, I was there. So. You have written songs for some of the well-known singers in our industry. Would you be so kind to expand about some of the names? Well, the first song I ever had recorded was by a guy named Lobo. Uh, he had me and you and a dog named Boo and a song of mine called Where Were You When I Was Falling in Love, and that did rather well. Uh, I remember dropping a song off at Kenny Rogers' recording studio once, and uh, they recorded the song. I was very fortunate. It's on the Gambler album, okay. which was a pretty big record early in my career. Excellent, excellent. Uh, a lot of stuff that went on. Uh, Larry Henley and I ended up being the Songwriters of the Year one year back there. And uh, our most famous song, The Wind Beneath My Wings, was the song oh, of the year. That's beautiful. Uh, from there, I moved to Los Angeles. And shortly after that, Bette Midler recorded that song, and it became the Grammy, you know. Beautiful, Grammy, so beautiful song. Pretty great. Alan, your life really changed when as a young man while going to college, you had that ambition and drive, and you were very much involved in the lives of John F. Kennedy because you believed in his dream. You believed who he was and what stood for. And after his unfortunate assassination, you approached Jackie Kennedy and asked her if you could do 
a writing, a documentary research on JFK, which she gave to you. Can you expand on that? Uh, yeah, I was actually in my uh, early 20s at the time, and Steve Mills was the uh, executive producer at ABC. Now, Roll was the uh, uh, head of ABC. And uh, I didn't really know too much about producing it at that time, and I called Jackie and asked her if she would uh, be, uh, uh, allow me to produce a special in the life of the late president. And to my surprise, she did. And she gave me all the uh, access to the Kennedy archives. And through that, I ended up getting the Mormon Tabernacle choir to sing with us, and Gordon McRae, and Joseph Cotton, and the uh, Kingston Trio, and Stephen Longstreet to write it. And uh, I was shocked that I uh, ended up winning a lot of awards and uh, got my career going. That's wonderful. And as I indicated, when the show was aired, more people watched that episode than any other shows in the yes, history of yeah. ABC. It was the uh, highest rated special in the history of ABC up until that time. And of course, Bobby Kennedy then approached you and asked you to do the 1,000 Days yeah, of JFK. Bob, Bobby approached me and uh, actually it was Peter Lawford, Milt Evans, and uh, Pierre Salinger came to me and said, would you consider creating a series on the late president's 1,000 uh, days? And so I did create it with major stars and Bobby, uh, I met with Bobby at the UN Plaza and uh, he approved me as the producer and writer and composer for that. Well, the same as Jeff, you have written several thousand songs in the industry, yes. some for Broadway, right. some for local artists, and congratulations to both of you. The one thing that I want to really expand on is having the pleasure of knowing you longer than Jeff. And since I've met Jeff, I'm really honored and I mean it sincerely. You, you both blend together very well as partners because you both have the passion the sincerity to do something that you're doing through your music to make sure that our children continue, as JFK did, to have the dream of Camelot continue to be alive. Right. So let's talk about the dream of Camelot, both of you, basically. How you came together and what you've been doing since then to promote that through the music we're going to talk about that you're collaborating on. Right. Well, the dream of Cam Camelot, basically, is the, the transform the world from being mind-driven to being heart-driven number one. And it's basically through the arts that one becomes heart-driven. Right. And uh, we uh, wanted to make a world a safe and noble place for children, which was the dream of Camelot. And uh, Jeff and I met many years ago, and we had done a musical of Calamity Jane okay. as a musical. Yes. And uh, I loved Jeff when I first met him, and uh, I approached him because I wanted to do a musical that would keep this dream alive and also would uh, make the world a safe and noble place for children and also create paradise on earth. Jeff, so, I'm sure you believe also in what Alan has been doing. Expand your feeling toward Dream of Camelot. Well, when Alan comes in the door with an idea, it's hard to say no to it because he's so committed to it. He, he, he's not one to just dabble all around. He's very so centered. and. Uh, we're talking about the dream of Camelot. He was telling me about this project he was working on. And he also mentioned another project that uh, a long book, he handed me a book about that big. <laughs> and I don't know whether to segue into that yeah, or not, yeah, but sure. that, this is how I know, Please. this is how we're back to working together. This was a book called The Adventures of Mr. Marigold. And I looked at it and I said, I don't have time for this. Uh, it was written by Michael Tobias. And I started, I picked it up and I started going through it and I couldn't quite understand how anyone had enough time on the planet to make a book this fat. And as I started reading, I was taken by uh, Michael's prose in this. And the story was going on and on and on and I, I asked finally, is there any way you could get me an outline? Well, we had already started writing songs for the show. We, we were going to make a musical out of this book. And we got the outline, and we've been probably working on it every day or three, four days a week for months now. So we're just completely inside it right now, and uh, it's going to be something. And the whole, well, yeah. whole premise of that is to keep the dream alive. Absolutely. Well, I know you both are very committed, which is really wonderful. Now, on the same basis, you are the president of the Olympia Seven 
awards, world the awards, awards, right? Yes. And those are given for let's say it's the Olympics of the arts, right. and it's like the Olympics except it's for the seven arts. And the Olympia Awards and the Family Film Awards were created by Antonio Cellini, Cellini. Mm -hmm. and it's basically to use the seven arts, which is music, art, uh, literature, sculpting, dance, uh, film, theater. Uh, to elevate the world through the arts. And it's like the Olympics, it's gonna be a major event uh, like the Olympics. Right, but it's really wonderful what you have done, Alan, with Antonio, because mostly when awards are given in this country are given for actors, singers, and so forth, but you have expanded that in far more greater because your dream of Camelot is going to go through all these people because everyone really has to have a hand, right, Jeff? Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. And therefore, the Olympic awards that you want to so-called call it is very worthy of what you both are stand for. Yes, it's heart driven and that's basically what Jeff and I are heart driven and it's to use the arts to uh, transform the world. You also had a celebration a couple of years ago in the United Nations. At the UN, yes. Would you expand on that briefly? I gave a speech at the UN, uh, I think it was the 20th of June basically on the dream of Camelot and the formation of the uh, Olympics and the new Olympics. And it was uh, highly received and the UN got behind it. And so it's a major, major endeavor now. Yeah. Well, a lot of people, Jeff, do not really realize what's going on in the world today with ISIS in Iraq, in Syria, with Hezbollah, with Mujahideen, and all the other fascist groups that are trying to destroy the world they have no remorse for people, especially for children. They kill children just as well as they kill adults. And I think this is what we need, truly, and I mean that sincerely. When I had the pleasure of meeting you, I immediately embraced you because I know you're a man of good heart, compassion, the same as Alan, and you both make a wonderful team. So expand again through your music, again, what you are really trying to achieve regarding this peace and harmony that mm. voices for parents who listen to you yeah. to become ignited and do something in return to make the dream continue? Well, I can speak uh, from my side of things. I am a songwriter and I wake up every day trying to come up with a reason to write a song. And uh, after doing it for 30 or so years, I started thinking, you know what, you can actually change people's hearts with a song. I've seen it happen with Wind Beneath My Wings. Uh, and where I don't have enough money to change the world, maybe I can do it through my music. And so we try every day. Uh, here came a project, back to our Adventures of, of Marigold, that uh, I don't really want to give the plot away, but ultimately the guy does fall into a lot of money, and he has the opportunity to go out and, through money, make a difference. And he fails miserably with money. And basically, he learns that uh, it's the quest, it's the uh, living, walk in the walk is kind of the best example for our children, you know, one, one on one. Right, right. So. I know Alan and I have spoken several times before, even I had the pleasure of having him on my TV show. We talk about this, you can have all the money and assets in the world. At the end, God forbid, if there's a disaster, there's an illness, you are willing to give everything you have away to have good health, mm -hmm. happiness, solitude. Mm -hmm. And this is what the sad thing is in the world today. They put so much emphasis on assets, power, they tend to forget about the basic things that God has given us. To be alive, good health, happiness, and help someone every day. And God bless for both of you because you both have been doing that. And I know you, my dear friend, for the past over 45 years, you have worked so hard, given your time and energy, to make sure your commitment to JFK family will come a reality. Yes, it will. And I know both of you are truly a pioneer in the music business, well known, respected, and I have no doubt music is the language of love on yes, a universal basis, and more people can come together in peace and harmony through music than anything, any other thing. And we, our signature song is The Quest is the Bliss, which uh, Jeff does beautifully. And that's the basic theme of uh, Mr. Miracle. When do you expect this album or come out? Well, the music is just now done. We're working on the uh, touches of the book. And uh, 
I don't know exactly when it's going to come out, but it, our first mission, I think we're going to make this the first uh, utopian opera that you might ever hear. So we're going to work on a thing that's going to be sung all the way through, as well on a different track. It's going to be a full uh, high-tech show, musical show as well. Excellent. Another meeting. We're also doing a uh, symphony. That we'll wonderful. be doing with symphony orchestras all over the uh, world, where they will be playing it with guitar leads and singers and chorus singing the songs throughout it. Excellent. Before I have the pleasure of asking Jeff to sing a few songs, and then I will join him with the last song, sure. hopefully whistling. Thank you. You have written so many books that have been published, and all on peace, harmony, unity, and God bless yes. you for that. Thank and you. And I mean that. And Jeff, God bless you from a young age that you have been blessed to have a beautiful voice, very talented. And you have truly brought your inner tranquility through your music to the people who have listened to you and also listened to your composition. So Thank let's you. begin with some of the songs you're going to be singing from Mr. Marigold's Gold. All right. The Adventure of Mr. Marigold. Well, this song uh, that I'm going to do first, is, these are out of context and out of sequence in the show. And I have to say, the first time I've ever done them in front of <laughs> an audience. This song is uh, our hero, Marigold, makes it to India. And uh, I don't know if you want to tell that story real quick. Why don't you? He meets the monks. He and goes to India, and he meets the monks, uh, Tibetan monks. They're sitting around a canvas uh, doing a sand painting. And the sand painting is a paradise. And uh, as he gets there, they're finishing the painting, and to his surprise, they pick up the canvas, carry it across the way into a stream, and pour it into the stream. They've been working on it for over a year. And they said the prayer for the year was to create paradise on Earth, and it's now the energy that we had in focusing for one year on it went up into the ethers to neutralize all the negativity of the world and to create paradise. And their comment to him was, the quest is the bliss. You don't have to finish anything. It's the process of creation that is the answer to life. Life is a journey that never ends. Yes, it is. And uh, he meets an Indian boy there. And this is the scene, the monks finally come in at the end. But this is kind of the, the message of this. This is the mantra the Monks. And the theme of our show. Mm -hmm. A quest is a bliss, is a bliss. It's a journey of a heart. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Stop seeking. You will find. You will find. You will find. It's not the mountain. It's the climb, it's the climb, it's the climb Hear the whisper from within, from within Now is your moment to begin, to begin On the road to paradise, paradise The destination is the right The quest is the bliss, is the bliss Between each breath let the source flow through you let go of the fear that binds you close your eyes and just envision the joy of life is in the living the quest is the bliss is the bliss and free yourself from the noise and confusion Realize it's all an illusion To get where you're going you must know You've arrived, there are no mistakes Only blessings in disguise Yes, the quest is the bliss, is the bliss It's a journey of a heart, yes it is, yes it is Stop seeking, you will find, you will find, you will it's not the mountain, it's the climb, it's the climb, it's the climb. Hear that whisper from within, from within. Now is the moment to begin, to begin. On the road to paradise, paradise, the destination is the ride. The 
quest is the bliss is the bliss the quest is the bliss is the bliss There's beautiful, more to it. But beautiful lyrics. You have to come see the show. <laughs> beautiful lyrics, really, Jeff. Wonderful. Thank we you. have time for about another three songs, if you'd be so kind. Would you like to? Uh, that's a lot of songs. Uh, a couple of songs. Let's see anyway. what I can do. This, the next song, in context of the show, our uh, hero, the hermit of Tesuge, is living in a run-down hacienda with all his stuffed animals and books and all that, and he, when he finds out he's come into this great fortune, he wants no part of it. And his uh, compadres talk him into trying, making the effort. He's got all the money that he needs to try to go out there. And so it gets complicated, let me tell you, but at the end of that scene, he uh, wonders to himself. I can no longer sit here and do nothing now that I have the means to do anything. What should I do? What if no child anywhere lay awake hungry or scared? What if and what if Every creature, big and small, lived in peace, one and all. Tripping round the sun upon this great big spinning ball. Here's the question that I ask of you. What if this crazy dream was just crazy enough to come true? What if there truly was a place where no heart could ever break? What if, what if there was no such thing as fear? We cried only happy tears. And across the sky, eternal rainbow suddenly appeared. Let your imagination run away with you. What if this crazy dream was just crazy enough to come true? In my mind, I can see it so clearly. A world never known before. There's a fine line between a hero and a fool And I can't sit by and just do nothing anymore What if everywhere on earth No more hunger, no more thirst And everyone had dignity and put their neighbor first I've had a chance to think it through. What if this crazy dream, this extraordinary dream, if it could really happen, just imagine what it means. What if this crazy dream was just crazy enough to come true? the dream of Camelot. Absolutely. Yes. You sing so well, oh, thank you. Jeff. When I close my eyes, as though I'm listening to Willie Nelson in some ways. Oh. I'm sure, and that's a great honor, actually. It is to me. But you have I'm a saying. very marvelous voice because you speak as you're singing, and mm -hmm. that's what is really catching. Mm -hmm. It's not atrocious words, it's meaningful words, and that's what music should be all about. Wow. And you thank so you eloquently expanded on Camelot. Now we have about a few minutes ago, and I think you and I are going to do the last song. So you can, oh, that would be my pleasure. But before we do, I mm -hmm. want to thank both of you for being here. And thank I meet you. us sincerely. You know, I love so you. Joy. I love you too. Thank so you so joy. much, Alan. Jeff, 
It's a pleasure to see you and have you on the show. Oh, and man. And I mean that. I'll wait when the album comes out. We'll come get back again on the show. So why don't you tell mm. the audience what is this all about? And I then will. if you'd be so kind. And you can be, uh, you can be in the show. Okay? Yes, I will still be. <laughs> <laughs> well, this song, uh, man, our hero <clears throat> makes it to, I hate to tell too much about it, but he crosses over to the other side. He dies trying, let me just say that. And he wakes up and uh, he, he's a younger man and he, he's uh, quite confused. And uh, he runs into this guy named Saul. And he goes, what is, what is going on? And uh, Saul comes with this little song. As well as we're, there's a crew of people at the base of the tree of life. And uh, there are some of the greatest folks that have come before. So they, they end up joining in here, but. Saul has a beard and a Grateful Dead t-shirt and an eye patch. And this is his advice to the world. Mm -hmm. he, oh, he's also blind. That's, he's blind, <laughs> he's not happy. You've come to a blind man to help you see. You wish to know the secret of life's mystery. Well, ponder this, friend. Open up your heart. Open up your mind, let your heart flow through. There's nothing in the universe that you can't do. You're waiting on the punchline. The joke's on you. Open up your mind and let your heart flow through. How did Mr. Mozart complete his mass? Or Lewis Carroll right through the looking glass? What inspired Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue? They opened up their mind and let their heart flow through. How did I sign Theo Rise MC Squared? Or Rodin sculpt the thinker from thin air? Mother Teresa and Gandhi knew to open up their minds, let their heart flow through. Open up your mind and let your heart flow through. There's nothing in the universe that you can't do. So if you're waiting on the punchline, the joke's on you. Open up your heart. Let your my heart flow through Shakespeare, Charlie Brown, and Vincent Van Gogh, Edison, the brother Grimm, Leonardo, the Dalai Lama, Joan of Arc, Maya Angelou. They opened up their mind and let their hearts flow through. Open up your mind and let your heart flow through. Sing it out. Up your mind and let your heart flow 